The children lay on their mattress, cuddling each other to keep warm as somebody knocked on the door. Faga got up and opened the door. A young woman stood there smiling warmly. She wore a gray hat with a five-point red star fused on it. Hey, guys. May I come in? Sure. Faga was surprised. She forgot the last time people spoke to her this friendly. My name is Olga. I'm here to help you. Do you want to come with me? I'll take you to a warmer place where you could eat something. The communist government gathered orphans all around the country into orphanages. They kept siblings together. Therefore, Sarah, Faga, Aaron, and Mayer found themselves in the same orphanage in Kharkov City, far away from Israelovka. It seemed that all their sufferings were over. But the children didn't feel much better there. They soon learned that the counselors stole everything from the orphans. Food, clothing, wood, and medication. All the children starved, got sick, and dropped dead like flies. There was nobody who could stand up for them. To survive, the children robbed each other and the youngest suffered the most. Mayer never got anything to eat in the kitchen. He handed his plate to a counselor and received it back filled with salty water that she called soup. He looked at his plate, not moving. Next, the counselor yelled, and Mayer was pushed over. The next kid was much older. He received the same kind of soup, but there was some potato in it as well. Can I have more? Mayer asked as he raised his tear-filled eyes. Next, the counselor yelled. Mayer looked at Sarah, Mommy. She didn't give me anything to eat, he cried sadly. You didn't give him anything. Sarah shouted in desperation. I did. The counselor angrily confronted her. You're lying. He just ate everything. Instead of being thankful that you're not dead already, you open your dirty mouth. How typical of a kike. Next, Sarah, Faga, and Aaron shared their food with Mayer. Food was the major concern for all the orphans, and they never rested, looking for any chance to get more. One night, Aaron sneaked from the bedroom into the kitchen, hoping to find leftovers or something edible in the garbage can. When he opened the kitchen door, he realized that he wasn't alone. Three other boys of the same age were searching the kitchen cabinets. They noticed a newcomer and didn't know how to react. Aaron was afraid that they would beat him up. But then he realized that the other boys were just as scared as he was. Hi, he greeted them. I'm not going to tell anybody that I saw you here. The boys didn't move. I have a little brother. He never gets anything to eat. I don't want him to die, so I give him my food. But I need to eat too. You know. He waited for them to respond. You've got to be kidding me. One of the boys loosened up finally. Hmm. You need to eat too. I wish I'd get a penny every time I hear this. I'd be a millionaire already. He smirked. I'm Isa. Our sister is sick. Mom always says to eat more if you're sick, but there is nothing here anyway. Do you have a mother? Aaron was surprised. I thought that the orphanage was for orphans only. He started to search through the cabinets, hoping to find something that these three brothers might have missed. Our parents have no job. So they sent us here for a while. Well, that's good that you have parents. My mom died, and my father left us. I hate him. What's taking you so long? A little girl with short, black, curly hair and a pair of blackberry eyes on her pale face came into the kitchen, closing the door behind her. Anna, you'd better go back to your bed, the older brother, Leo, told her. You can't walk around being sick. You were gone for too long. I was worried. The counselors could still come, and if they find out, you'll be in trouble, she replied. So what? Isa said. I don't care. They don't feed us anyway. Anna spotted Aaron. Hi. What's your name? I'm Aaron. Aaron. Are you looking for food for your sister too? No. I'm looking for food for my little brother, but there's nothing here. Is he sick? No, he's just very hungry. Are you sick? Yes, and I'm cold too. My mom tells me that I'm too thin. Which is why I'm cold. 
I would give you my jacket, if I had one. My neighbor stole it from me. It was very warm. Stole? Did you see it? Yes, he took it off me. My sister fought him. And he beat her up. Oh, I'm sorry, Aaron. If we hug each other, we'll get warmer. Do you know that? Anna asked. Yes. We always hug each other. Anna gave Aaron a bright smile. It's very generous of you to think of sharing your jacket with me. We have to tell our parents about all this, the smaller brother, Jacob, said. You've got to be kidding me. How would it help? Isa was irritated. What can they do about it? We have to do something for ourselves, a girl's firm voice sounded out in the dark. The children then turned and saw Sarah standing by the door. We're all starving, sick, and dying. These counselors are thieves. They belong in prison. The children looked at Sarah in silence. They needed some leadership, and here it was. We were starving when we were alone. Now. We're beaten by bigger children, humiliated, and still starving. So, what do we have to do? Who do we have to tell? Isa asked. These committee guys are the same, Leo said in distress. Yes. I saw it myself. My counselor gave them a pack of meat from the kitchen, Jacob confirmed. There is no reason to even try, Leo concluded, but Sarah had her mother Jeannie's revolutionary spirit. So she would not give up that easy. If we come together and cover for each other, we might be able to do something about it. What can we do? Leo resisted. Instead of fighting and stealing food from each other, we have to unite and fight our counselors. Look how many people we have here an entire army. And how many counselors do we have? Five or six? They're just humans. My mother taught me that all people are just humans. We have to fight them, not our little brothers and sisters. So, you're saying that we have to tie them up and put them in prison? Huh? Well, yes. You've got to be kidding me. Isa smirked. I know where the communist committee is. We've been there before they brought us here. We can go there, find Olga, and tell her everything. Who is Olga? Leo asked. I don't know any Olga. She's the woman who brought us here. And I trust her. Why do you think she is any different to all these counselors? Because she shared her food with me and didn't start eating it until she was sure that I had enough. Sarah. What if she's not in the committee anymore? Aaron asked. We don't know, and we'll never know if we don't try, Sarah replied angrily. If we don't find her, we'll talk to someone in the committee openly anyway. If we don't speak up, nobody will know, and we'll all die. In any case, we won't lose anything. These counselors condemned us to death already. Don't you understand? The children were so desperate that they were ready for this challenge. The news about a secret children's group spread very quickly. And the counselors found out about it as well. At night, in complete silence and darkness, a heavy hand covered Sarah's mouth and she was pulled from her bed, as if in a terrifying nightmare. Someone put a bag over her head and dragged her somewhere. She was a strong and brave girl and didn't give up that easy, but she couldn't overcome several adults. She was pushed onto the concrete floor. You might sit here for a couple of days and think about your rights. Sarah recognized one of the counselor's voices. The next thing she heard was the heavy sound of a door slamming and locking from the other side, followed by the movement of furniture. Sarah was alone. She removed the bag from her head and found herself locked in an empty basement closet without any windows. The closet was pitch dark. The cement walls and floor were cold and moist. There was nothing to sit or lay on. She stood there for some time, and it was tiring. Don't sit or lean on a rock, it will take your life away, her grandmother had told her many times. So, she didn't. But as time went by, the exhaustion brought her down. Sarah put the bag that she removed from her head on the floor, sat on it, and then lay down. And then, she had no strength to get up. The floor was cold, and the bag she was laying on didn't protect her from cold and moisture. 
She felt how the cement floor was pulling the life out of her, exactly as her grandma warned her. Sarah lay there for eternity, with no idea how many hours or days had passed. She was thirsty because nobody brought her water, she was starving because nobody brought her food. In complete darkness, she touched the moist walls, attempting to find a way to escape. Sarah felt drops of water on her palms and licked them. She touched the wall again and licked her palms again, and again, and again. But she was still thirsty. Sarah found the bag on the floor again and sat on it. She remembered Faga and her touch. She closed her eyes, wrapped her hands around her shoulder, and cried. It didn't matter anymore. Why should she open her eyes anyway if she couldn't see? She was cold and tired. She didn't feel hunger anymore. She didn't care. She just fell asleep. Sarah didn't know who took her from the basement, but when she regained consciousness, she found herself in a hospital room. It was a big room with about 40 people in it. She lifted her head from the pillow and a nurse moved from one patient to another, in between hospital beds. You're a very brave girl. Do you know that? She said, coming closer to Sarah. Sarah smiled weakly. Your sister asked me to tell you that she'll visit you tonight. Where am I? Sarah asked. You're in the hospital. You were very cold and severely dehydrated, and to tell you the truth, you're the lucky one. People usually die with your condition. So you are my hero. Faga came to the hospital when it was already dark outside. She hugged Sarah tight for a long time, crying. I thought you died, when I first saw you. What happened? Faga? When they grabbed you, I wasn't sleeping. I saw who did it. I was afraid to follow them because they would put me into the basement too. So, while they were busy with you, I woke up the boys and we ran away. In the morning, we went to the committee. I was looking for Olga, but she wasn't there. Nobody wanted to listen to me. They thought that Mayor was my son because he calls me, Mommy. They thought that I wanted to give him up for adoption. When I told them what happened, they didn't believe me. They accused me of making up stories. We couldn't go back because we knew that they'd do the same to us as they did to you. So, we just sat on the stairs outside and didn't leave. We begged for food the entire day. It was very cold at night, but Mayor didn't complain. I was so afraid for him. A teardrop fell down her cheek. I couldn't sleep at night because I was too scared. But Aaron and Mayor slept. I fell asleep only at sunrise, and then, I was awakened by a woman's voice. Why are these homeless kids sitting there when they belong in an orphanage? I opened my eyes and saw Olga. And she recognized me. I was so happy to see her. I knew that we were safe. After telling everything, she took us in and gave us food, and it was so warm there. We told her how babies die because they starved and how nobody cares when they're sick. We also spoke about how the counselors would steal everything and that we have no food, clothes, or bedding. We told her that they grabbed you last night and took you some place. Olga took a couple of gunmen with us, and we came back to the orphanage. We couldn't find you. We didn't know where they took you nobody knew. The door to the closet was camouflaged. Once all the counselors were arrested, they were interrogated for two days, while you were in the basement with no water or food. So finally, one gunman said to them, If you don't tell us where you hid the girl, I'll kill you all one by one. But they still refused to tell, so then he shot Mrs. Frog in the knee. Then, she cried out loud and confessed. And we found you. I thought you were dead. Then, they said that you were alive, and I prayed. Faga cried again. It's over now. Thank you. Sarah reached over to her sister. You are my hero. Sarah. She smiled. So, what's going to happen now? Are they going to bring new counselors to us, hopefully good ones? No. They said that we would take care of everything. We'll receive food and clothes and everything else to equally distribute them between us. Olga said that we could take care of ourselves without anyone's help. 
I like that. Sarah smiled. So, maybe this new communism idea is not that bad after all. What do you think? I think it's good, but it was better when we lived with mommy. I miss her so much. I miss her too. The sisters hugged each other. You know what, Sarah? Olga found me a job. What? Sarah got excited. Yes. She said that since I'm almost 15 years old. I can start working. She said that I'm very responsible. The only problem is that if I start working, I have to move out of the orphanage. That means that I won't see you every night anymore. Though, I promise you that as soon as I make money, I'll take you to live with me. Okay? No, Sarah said. We have food here. You won't be able to feed all three of us on your salary. I guess that. If you have more than you need, you'll share it with us, and if we have more than we need, we'll share it with you. In a year, when I turn 15, I'll ask Olga to find me a job, too. Together. It would be much easier. Yes. I guess you're right, Faga agreed. How are Aaron and Mayer? They're good. Aaron's new friend, Anna, helps him out with Mayer, though he's already a big boy. They spend a lot of time together. Faga smiled. It's better than fighting each other, Sarah said in agreement. Sarah, I have something to give you. Guess what? I can't. Samuel wrote you a letter. He wants to come visit you. He doesn't know anything about you. I think he loves you, Sarah. Letter? You read my letter? Yep. What? You weren't there and I thought it might be something important. Faga pulled the letter from her packet. Well, if you weren't sick, I would make you dance for me. Give it to me. Now. Sarah laughed. She opened the letter and silently read it, wearing a happy face. Then, a shadow covered her cheeks. I'll never forgive his mother for showing us the door. She told us that she had no more. Maybe she didn't. Sarah, it doesn't matter and it's not important. The important thing is that he loves you. I love him too, Faga, Sarah smiled. Sarah returned to the orphanage as a hero. The children greeted her with delight because their life had improved, thanks to her. Their faces had changed. They looked happier and healthier. A new director was assigned to the orphanage. She seemed like a nice lady. However, the children didn't want to take any more chances and kept the responsibility of the food distribution to themselves.